Welcome back to the program, everybody. My name is Cameron Steele. I'm Lucia Minetti Steele. And our phone uh, thing has been solved. We have Marilyn on the phone. So how exciting! How exciting! Oh, so Marilyn yay. Tunchend, uh, M.E.D., is the author of two books on mind tilt equity, whose work concentrates on the development of the energy body, the double, as a means for personal and planetary transformation and liberation. She has studied Toltec Mayan shamanism since the 1970s, emphasizing dreaming empowerment energetic healing and beyond death states. She has taught and presented both nationally and internationally, participated on panels and in conferences with noted physicians, psychiatrists, scientists and religious leaders, and has recently uh, led sacred journeys into Mexico. Her wisdom regarding these ancient realization traditions is deep and well respected. Uh, the two books, of course, are Don Juan and the Art of Sexual Energy, the Rainbow Servant of the Toltecs, and Don Juan and the Power of Medicine Dreaming. Uh, forgive me if I get this name wrong. Nagal, uh, and Nag Nawal, 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 mm -hmm. woman's journey of healing. So, welcome to the program. Marilyn. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Thank you for receiving me. Uh, I'm just, I'm, it's just been a lot of fun over the phone lines. It was yeah. a very, a very mm -hmm. intergalactic experience. Very <laughs> interesting. So, you know what I want to sure. do is uh, just give out the number because we do have the two books to give away. Yeah. And I'm going to give out two numbers because I don't know if the first one, if they're working, because of course we have to call you. Yes. Um, so the number to call the studio is four two five three seven three. Five five two seven. That's four two five three seven three five five two seven, or call toll free at one eight seven seven six four nine one 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 two. And folks, if you don't get through and you're calling in for the books, email us. Email us live at contactradio.info and uh, with your information, and we'll be sure to get you the books. That's live at contactradio.info, and we'll be sure to get you the books in case you can't get through. If they don't get through, it's mysterious energy at play. That's, that's right, right, and that's how we're going to leave it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So we don't understand it. We're just glad with that we're communicating. Absolutely, that's, that's the bottom it. line. So I, uh, you know, Marilyn, you're you're a lot of fun. Uh, just Good. in a short time, we've talked, and yeah. it's, it's been it's been a lot <laughs> of fun talking with you. And so uh, let's get right into it, shall sure. we? Jump. Okay. Uh, <laughs> first of all, your work is it very similar to any other kind of work uh, of energy of energy healing? Uh, because you are doing a workshop here as well, and that's what we yes. want to talk about as well. So, Well, um, I found that in every energy healer's work is different, mm -hmm. but um, uh, some, some, uh, some energy healers and some shaman, they have a very uh, laser-like focus to their work, and others are more gentle and subtle, and some are a com kind of a combination of both. Um, this, this work is... Um, is is a combination of both. There are subtle, sublime, gentle aspects, and there are very focused, strong, uh, laser-like aspects. I think one thing that distinguishes this work from a lot of other energy work is its emphasis upon dreaming. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you don't find uh, in a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of energetic work. In fact, the majority of the energetic work that uh, that uh, that I've experienced does not focus this dynamic. The only other groups that I've found that, or the only other disciplines that I've found that really work with it, there is an aspect of Taoism that works with dreaming, and the Tibetans, the Dzogchen tradition, uh, works with dreaming as well. And um, they they see it very much the way that uh, that uh, the shamanic traditions see it, uh, Siberian and Mesoamerican and native shamanic traditions, is that um, if you don't focus in the dreaming energy, you're wasting all of that time. You're wasting all of those moments of your life. You're wasting all of those opportunities for receiving visions, for empowerment, for enlightenment. Uh, for healing, you're wasting all of that medicine, you're wasting all of that non-ordinary reality and the possibility to bridge those uh, those states and those medicines and those uh, those energies into what we would call the the waking world of um, of consensus that we kind of sonambulistically walk around in. Mm. So, in that sense, when we do an event, uh, we always do we always do dreaming work. We don't just end it. In fact, we don't we don't end the event at night. It, the event goes on throughout the night. Uh, we uh, uh, we we dream. Uh, we strive to dream in an awakened state 
um, where it's very like lucid dreaming, where you realize that you are dreaming while you while you are while you are engaged in the in the process of the dream, and you you come to understand how how it is that we dream and the energy that that. Uh, that creates the, or that co-creates the dream, and we uh, we work with um, we work with activating this uh, this kind of realization in the participants, in the practitioners, and then we have specific tasks that focus um, uh, directly on the intent of the event, the medicine intent of the event, that are engaged in by all mm. of the participants. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's those are the practices that. Uh, that the shaman undertake. Uh, there's a great quote by by Black Elk, and I like to I like to to honor him with this with the with uh, paraphrasing this this quote. Uh, he's a, he was a Sioux medicine man, and he used to say that um, that it isn't enough to have a vision. That that in order to have the medicine or the power of that vision, you have to bring it to earth for for it to be for it to be a tangible, a real medicine for all to see. Mm-hmm. That's very much the kind of dreaming work that we do. We go into dreaming to uh, kind of vision questing into the dream with lucidity to access the medicine, and then there are practices, very focused practices that dr- bring that energy back into the waking world for the benefit of uh, of those that are practicing and also for the benefit of those that um, that uh, that experience the ripple effect it's it's very it's very much um, you bring this kind of energy in and it has a very expansive exponential kind of a blessing it gets more potent it continues to activate and um, well, others you, would even you had talked about bridging uh, bridging yes. dreams and this yes, is yes, this yes. is this is basically what what it means to bridge a dream is to yes. bring it in and having the ripple effect happening yes Right. It's the very first practice in the book. Uh, in uh, the book, one of the books that you it's, mentioned, uh, the, Don, Don, Juan Don Juan and the Art of Sexual Energy, the one right. that you're reading. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a foundation practice that of entering into the dream lucidly and bringing something, some of the medicine from that dream back with you. That creates a foundation stone. Which you go into the practice tools at the end of each chapter, too, to, yes. have to assist people with uh, with uh, their dreaming techniques and, and lucid dreaming. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, the practice is, is, uh, is delineated step by step. And so that uh, you essentially go in with intent. You go in. Uh, you go in with the intent to be awake in there, mm-hmm. and with a specific intent. And then you kind of allow yourself to home in on that energy when you come out of dreaming, and to find pieces of it or the energy in its entirety through synchronicity. It's it's so wonderful to see this because as a culture we have been so cut off from our dream state period. Yeah. And to to reactivate even just the dreaming aspect and then to get into the lucid dreaming. How did you get on your path? Well, uh, or how did I, you find your path? I should say, or how did it find you? Uh, <laughs> kind of, yes, yes, yes. All of those questions are are applicable. I was. After college, I was making a journey uh, to Mexico. I, I had uh, I had studied in in preparation. Uh, I had made a I had taken a, a degree in Spanish and one in comparative religion philosophy. And I was interested in going to Mexico to deepen after my undergraduate before my graduate degree. And I got off a train in Yuma, Arizona. And that was where the whole thing began. I found myself, um, I was trying to find out information about uh, taking the train down further into Mexico. And I found myself actually in a native area there in southern Arizona, right at the border between uh, Sonora and uh, uh, Mexico and uh, southern Arizona. And the cultures, there were several uh, uh, small native groups living in that area that uh, uh, were very, very uh, profound in their dream work. Most of the of the medicine that they practice is based and derived from dreaming, and they call the the entire phenomenon dream power. Mm. And um, almost uh, almost immediately, uh, it just evolved organically. You can say that you can say that it invo- it evolved uh, via synchronicities. It evolved via a facility and a sense a sensitivity toward dreaming because I had had that energy, kind of energy brewing in me since I was a child Mm -hmm. and even recognized certain elements of the atmosphere in Yuma to the point that I was just kind of following or navigating uh, remnants of dreams via synchronicities until I just 
walked 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 right into uh, to a full fledged dreaming reality. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there was uh, um, there were there was a, a, an energetic uh, an energetic presence there at the other end of that tunnel. Uh, waiting for me, a counterpart or a mentor, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, a much, a much, uh, a native gentleman, much older than myself, and um, which uh, was done one, is Yes, it? I was. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I was very drawn to. Uh, I was very drawn to uh, to his presence, to the silence, uh, to to his energy, and to this profound sensation of non ordinary reality that permeated permeated everything. Uh, when he was around, I, I didn't. Uh, it was. It was. His, it, it, it was completely silencing, and um, it was. Uh, it, it stopped you totally. It, mm. it was. Uh, it, there was. There was. Uh, there was no need to experience anything else. It was almost as though. It was almost as though that was the profound reality, and everything else was very superficial. And uh, out of that. Out of that. Out of that reality, it seemed as though everything was very trivial. Everything had to do with the details of ordinary life. And stepping into that reality, everything was magical and inexplicable mm. and very, mm. very deep. Right. And it was sort of like being out in the middle of the ocean swimming, and you find that uh, that you that you that you like swimming out there, and yeah. you don't particularly wish to come to shore. Mar- right. Well, right. that w- that would make complete sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, Marilyn, I have a I have a email. Somebody emailed us. Yeah. Uh, question, and they also Lovely. emailed us uh, that they want the book. When one dreams, mm-hmm. does it matter if our uh, if our if our dream is lucid or not, and energetically affected while we are dreaming? Um. That. Di- well, it what matters is a state of awakening within the dream. If you if you examine the experiences that you've had in dreaming, some kinds of experiences in dreaming are kind of like being in a bumper car and you don't have a hold of the steering wheel and the dream is taking you wherever it wants to take you and mm-hmm. you can't you almost you, you you can't really grasp onto it. Uh, you, not that you want to hold it, but you you don't have you don't have any real sense of how it's being done or any navigating awareness whatsoever. And another kind of a dream that that you have it it it, it unfolds before you, but simultaneously you awaken to some aspect of the profundity of it, of how it's being done, of something that there is to remember, of something that you've been told, of some medicine that you've been given. And and this level of awakening can be grown. Um, lucid dreaming lucid dreaming is kind of a technique. It's it it's 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 realizing that you're dreaming, but it may or may not involve a full awakening. Uh, this is not really a technique, but rather a process of awakening or of realization within the dream in the same way that uh, one seeks realization or awakening in the practice of meditation. Right. And so, yes, of course, it is important, just as it is in meditation. Certainly, in, in, in meditation, the internal silence is important, but that is not the only dimension that's being gone for. The same with dreaming. Mm-hmm. Recall is very important. Lucidity is very important, but an allowing is very important. The, uh, the 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 ability to receive the dream, but additionally, the capacity to awaken and become realized in there is what's right. ultimately being stri- being 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 uh, strived, driven. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're striving for. Striving. There you so go. At that level. <laughs> At that level, the the, the practice of of, uh, of realizing or awakening mm. meditation and the practice of realizing and awakening dreaming actually bridge one another, and so you have a kind of a twenty four hour a day or a timeless process of awakening and realization that's going on in the entirety of your being, not just while you're awake or waking up during the day and then you go into the sleep of oblivion and you mm, lose right. all of it, but mm-hmm. rather all the time that you live, mm. so you don't waste a single moment or a single 
mm-hmm. element of your essence. See, and and for me, I love dreaming, and oh, yes. and I I love and you know I've I've heard. I've told people I like to sleep because I love to dream. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've had um, precognitive dreams. I've had dreams that I can change. But it's one of those things, what else can you do with those dreams? And how how do you learn? Is this something that you can learn to to have lucid dreaming? Yes, yes. That is, yes, that is one reason that we, that we endeavor to, to share is because you can learn and you can become more proficient. What can you do in a dream? Well, it's it's endless, it's infinite, because the constraints of the consensus agreement are not on you in dreaming. The only agreement that is there in dreaming is the agreement that you make with energy. All of the other agreements, although they may be present like ghosts haunting you, they can be let go of very, very easily. You can decide to fly, you can decide to dissolve something, but additionally, you can you can come to understand how that is being done, how the whole creative dream, co-creative dream takes place. You can come to understand the illusory nature of all dreaming, both in, mm-hmm. in that domain and in the waking world. You can seek to, to experience your natural level of, of luminous awareness and, um, and understand how co-creation, how illusion, delusion, and all of these dynamics, how agreement, how all of that is formed. The the uh, also in dreaming we have the capacity to communicate with a lot of energies that tend to be filtered out by the sphincter of our of our daily awareness. You know, our mind kind yes. well really our mind kind of sphincters out mm-hmm. a lot of information that's coming at us all the time right. because we have to focus on specific tasks that that very much apply to a, a survival agreement or an achievement agreement or a familial agreement. Well, you think you think with the dreams that that's where your truth comes out. Yes, you, mm-hmm. your energy body your energy body is 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 liberated from those from those dynamics, and it uh, it is more uh, it is more movable, it is more fluid, and these other communications come in. So you have uh, you have access to. Uh, information that you always have access to, but you you're kind of stinkering out during during the waking day. Right, and that of course is can be very very valuable in doing um, in doing emotional work and doing shamanic work and letting go of things and working through things in healing. Uh, and uh, and also just for the sheer joy of it, just for the sheer joy of exploring everything that's out there. Well, that that to me is is one of the one of the probably the the base reasons of of my loving dreams is because it is a, a matter of exploring and looking to see what can I find, what can I yeah. what can I put into um, into a, a tangible. Uh, here and now, yes. from from what I, what just came to me from from the uh, just the other night, yeah. and uh, and to me that's probably one of the things that that I probably find the most difficult is finding the relationship between the dream body and the physical body, and and moving forward. Can can you help me with that? Yes, of course. Uh, the the dream body is, is essentially the energy body, and. The physical body is also essentially the energy body, but they're expressing themselves differently. Uh, the dream body has access to all of the information of the physical body and how how the healing is going, how the bones are made, what's going on. It has all of that information. It also has access to all of the information that is coming at the energy body that the mind normally sphincters out. The mind gives you your concept that the physical body and the energy body are really two different entities. But in reality, it's more of a holistic phenomenon that they are are expressions of the same energy. Um, energy the language of energy is to convey information through movement. If we limit that, then we get a different concept of what it is that we are. Just like if we tune into 99.5, we get a different we get a different radio program. We get a different different information than if we tune into um, 1150. Right. So, so this is what's going on with the mind. Now, the energy body can hear 
when, when, it, when that sphincter relaxes and the energy body experiences itself as energy and understands that the physical body is an expression of that, it can experience these other frequencies. It can let more of this information in, come to realize itself as, as an energetic entity uh, beyond the limitations of th that, that we that we that we say well you we can't have you can't have more than this in the 99.5 frequency you right. know but but the energy body is receiving all of these other frequencies as well mm -hmm. yes but all of these others exist and I'm also that I'm also receiving this and it has to be a conscious uh, uh, there has to be uh, in my opinion a consciousness then of understanding that you we are all of these things and yes, and, it's, it's and, and, and therefore your dr within your dreams it would allow you to expand even more Yes, and awaken into it. That's essentially mm. it, it is. It is an awakening. It is a waking up into it. And as one wakes up, one becomes a pathfinder, a navigator of these different frequencies. One journeys off into the infinite and says, "Infinite and says, mm, where is this coming from? What is it? What is it in all of this?" That, that, that is the expression of that. Where is that within me? Where is that within, within all that exists? And one, uh, one becomes a, a great long distance operator, you know, a communicator, and also, also, uh, an interstellar traveler, a journeyer, or an energetic traveler, a multidimensional traveler, uh, a traveler beyond certain kinds of limitations that we very much believe in, on the 99.5 frequency that do not even exist at 11.50. Right. That makes perfect sense. Oh, well, it's, it's a wonderful way to understand it via the, via the, um, the satellite communication, <laughs> via the radio. <laughs> and, and when you think that, that radio waves, that the, that the frequencies from the creation of all of this come at us as radio waves, and that radio waves go on forever, and that this information is being conveyed via the movement of energy. You can imagine the kind of, 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 of infinite, sublime symphony that you can hear if you allow yourself yeah. to hear it. Um, the music of the spheres. That's, and you know what? I was listening. I was taking uh, an email while you were talking. And yes, go ahead. And I really liked the radio waves part you were talking about yes. because this is all part of it. This it's is beautiful. All, you know, In the name of your show, come on. Contact. <laughs> we got to love it, right? We've got to this in. That's this right. is part of the dream That's that right. we are dreaming right now. And this is from somebody, uh, their email was NT Transformation. I can't give out the whole email, of course, but he didn't give his name. Okay. Um, the question is, how does one find... Uh, how does one find healing techniques through herbs, etc., in dreaming to treat a specific ailment. Let me tell you something about techniques. And I have, uh, I've spoken to a couple of energy healers that really have a strong dose of energy, you know, the kind of energy that just comes to them and says, look, you are going to learn to deal with me or your life is going to be a disaster. And even if you don't learn to deal, even if you do learn to deal with me, I'm still going to be hard on you because right. I have a lot of energy. And they all say, you know, techniques are not very powerful. The real, it is the relationship, it is the intimate relationship that one has with the energy. The energy, uh, one develops a relationship of trust and this intimacy of I will, this beloved intimacy of I will do anything, you know, for the beloved, anything that is that is that is of integrity, that is of the standard of the beloved, yes. and the, the energy, the energy, the energy body, the energy work, it all becomes the beloved, and uh, the energy that one is that one is receiving through one's body and one's body's one's energy, one's own energy body's relationship to it, the levels of awareness that one rises to, the energy it tells you what to do. Now, now. One thing that I have found very useful is to network with other healers who are really good, you know, who are really, who really have, you know, who, who haven't gone and taken a course, you know, that, that, you know, that, that what, what's happened is maybe they were involved in energetic work. The one, one, uh, one gentleman, uh, he, friend, he is a, or, or a respected, a respected, uh, respected uh, uh, master. He's a, he's a Taoist, an associate. He's, he, he's, he, but he, but that's not what that's not how the, the energy was with him as a boy. Mm -hmm. He 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 studied he studied uh, martial arts because he was Chinese. But that couldn't account 
for for some of these for some of these jumps in energy that he was experiencing that kind of took right. him to levels that mm -hmm. he was supposed to get 20 years later. That makes it sense. was just kind of coming to him spontaneously, and he arrived at his own understanding of what that was that kind of transcended the linear continuum. And then later he realized that there were some things about the energy work that were unique to him that were that were new that newness is possible and i've seen this happen with other healers and then someone will come along another another friend a, a polish healer he was licensed by the polish government by the communist government to practice energetic healing in a communist hospital and they were investigating him this is how good how good he how good he is and the, uh, the Tibetans came through there, and they said, "You know, you that's that's some energy now, you know, well, and and you're just working that you're just working with it spontaneously, just kind of feeling your way through based upon what you see. Uh, but if you do this, if you do this, it'll focus for you a little bit more, and you won't get tired, and you'll be mm -hmm. able to work more powerfully." They didn't ch they didn't tell him what it was. They didn't change. They just gave him something that would enhance it even more and let him go on his own journey of discovery. Yeah. And then you meet with individuals like this. Another thing, if you've got an energy like this, study anatomy. You know, don't start start learning about the inner energetic anatomy of the body. The energy will talk to you. It'll it'll actually correct you know, limited perceptions at the 99.5 frequency, and it'll show you things via the dreaming, via the energy work. Honor the energy work of others, learn and appreciate it, and stay away from courses that give you a certificate that say, I'm going to take somebody that's never done any energy work at all, and in three days, I'm going to certify them. You're going to be certified, right? You're going to be an energy that's going to cure cancer. And you're you know? going to kick butt doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. No, instead... Go get a treatment yeah. from somebody who really is curing. You. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, and then and then you know and then honor what they're doing. You, you know, know, go back and receive more and say, oh please, Marilyn. You know. This is something that we talked about a, a couple of shows ago, actually, when when Sylvia Brow was on the show. Uh, you know, it's if you're going to go see a healer, go somebody who's walked the talk. Yes. And who's been down that road or, and, and talk to them because that, those are the people that have used their inner, inner guidance to, to, to exactly. heal them. You know, exactly. it's, it's one thing to, you know, I, I had a, I'll just quickly, but before I get to these email questions, somebody called me on my stuff one day because I read the, I read a book and decided, oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to teach this workshop now. <laughs> and, uh, right in the middle of my workshop, I went into a huge process because somebody called me on it. And I went, oh wow, I can't do this because I got too much bags. I've got too much stuff yeah. going on. So you know, I had to go through but that whole you, process. You realized that oh, I, I, yeah, I had to. I, my the integrity was a big thing for me. So I, uh, it still is. But I mean, you know, <laughs> was it was it was a big thing? Not anymore. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thing was is that I learned something about you know what if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be a person that, that assists other people on their journey through whatever healing modality I take on, then I've got to find a healing modality that I can work with that reflects something or some kind of path that I've been on. Yes, it focuses the energy that you have actually received, and all of these healers that yep. that I've been speaking of, they've all they've all studied something either exactly. either during the time that they were that they were received. See what what was happening with these people is that they were not on ninety nine point five. Yeah, they were on eleven fifty, and they couldn't explain what was happening to them because everybody else was on ninety nine point five. Right, so right. they started trying to study something that could explain it, and then what that did was that gave nutrition yeah. to their eleven fifty frequency, and all of a sudden they jumped to frequency twelve thirty. Exactly, and so forth like that. But yeah. they've all but they've all studied and um. It's very important to open up. It's very important to study, but it's also important to allow the energy to come to you that's and right. to receive. That's right. Well, you know something, and that's the thing that's about... That's a lot for flow, That's too. the thing, and I, I really mm -hmm. want to get to these questions, so I'm Ooh, just going to... go ahead. I'm gonna I really make... love the questions because a lot of times I don't have the opportunity to answer questions that are being phoned in or emailed in. Well, so we, usually go ahead. we usually do pretty good with the phone calls that's and emails great. here, so... Uh, but first off, I just want to say something about what you just said because I mean we could talk all night. I oh, know sure. it's a it's a rich um, topic. But, Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, this is something that I was speaking on earlier on. It you know mm. when it comes to what path you're going to be on, and I didn't get a chance to mention this, but your path will often come to you. Yes. You know, it'll choose you. Yes. You know, and and you'll know. 
So, anyways, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, That's good. Okay, this is from uh, the, the person that won the book, actually. He had a question in there, another oh, question that I didn't see. Uh, first off, um, I guess we're still on dreaming, so let me get to the dreaming question, <laughs> and then I want to move to the woman and sexual relationship question. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure. so we got a, a, a quick question from Anna. I uh, don't know where you're from, Anna, but thank you for emailing in. Um, and uh, the question is, she finds herself flying instead of walking in her dreams Wonderful. all the time. Wonderful. <laughs> so, is that a good thing for? Oh, it's I, wonderful. I assume that she's it's, asking it's me. It's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know. I and mean, what does that mean then? Well, it means that she has a lot of a lot of the a lot of very very allowing, very joyful, very liberating energy. She may also have a a lot of sexual energy, mm. and um, you know, of the of the um, of the joy related kind. You right. know, not the not the repressed. You know, oh my gosh, kind, but the, yeah. but but you know, related to ecstasy, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the not the drug, but the actual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the actual ecstatic so, experience. This yes. the whole body experience of, yes. of the of yes. sexual energy. Certainly, yes. Flying is flying is a very uh, is a very uh, sublime and liberated uh, manifestation in, freedom. in dreaming. Freedom. Yes, it's freedom. Freedom, freedom. Yes. And, and of course, freedom and elevation. Yes, yes. exactly. Uh, now the second question is from San G San Gabriel in California. Where are you uh -huh. calling? Where are you calling from, by the way? Oh, I'm not going to tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's I'm in the calling, ethers. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling from the uh, from the radio telescope somewhere, oh. somewhere off in space. Oh, I see. You gotta okay, love that. You gotta love yeah. that one. Exactly. All right. Well, this question is: What do you think about women and sexual relationships? Should they be celibate and don't and not have any children to preserve their energy? Oh my goodness! That's, a That's big another question. one that could go on. It and is. On. When I read that question, on. I was a little afraid to ask it because it is a. There's, yeah, there's, it's there's, a very, it's a very strong, it's a very strong topic. That depends. That depends upon the woman, first of yeah. all, of whether or not she really wishes to have children. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if she does not, if she does not feel inclined to have children, she should not have them. Well. My, I get a sense that he's what he's really asking here is that of course he's uh, asking about the, the sexual the sexual relationship and and should he and it, you know women women energy. are different women are different from men mm -hmm. uh, and I mean I can get really really technical but I'm not sure I'm not sure. How much is how much is kosher over Actually, the air? Actually, this could be a man, a woman. I don't know because I okay. can't tell by the I'm name. Not, so it doesn't matter. You yeah. can go yeah. wherever you like to, Marilyn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I could go really, really technical. I could go, you know, I mean, but women have a capacity for pure pleasure without any loss of energy. Right. And mm -hmm. um, and they ha they have they have an organ uh, or or a nerve center in their body that is devoted to nothing but. Pure pleasure, without any loss of energy whatsoever, with no reproductive response associated with it. Correct. Now, right. women have a reproductive center as well for you know for regarding sexuality, but they have a center that is devoted to nothing but pleasure, nothing <laughs> but pleasure. So, women uh, and women have the capacity for multi multiple uh, ecstatic responses, and women generate energy when they focus there. Now, that is a completely different kind, generate and circulate energy, and raise and alchemize energy and create sacred elixirs when they focus there multiply. Now, that is very different from reproduction. Reproduction means intercourse, it means penetration, it means conception. And that's a very different kind of sexual response. Absolutely. And the woman has the capacity for both. Uh, there is the sexuality of, of, the, of the reproducing mother who has the capacity for all of this, but she is giving birth to children. And her relationship with her children will be that she gives a certain amount of the best of herself to each offspring as it should be. And additionally, she maintains energetic ties or lines in the form of, of nutrition and guidance, energetic nutrition and energetic guidance with these children until they are adults, at which time those energetic lines can be retracted by the woman if she's wise enough to do so, and that energy can be reclaimed and the child can be a full-fledged autonomous adult liberated from the continual parent, which of course is very empowering and rite of passage, and is a rite of passage for the child. So it very much depends upon whether the woman is, is a mother energy, 
or whether the or whether the woman is uh, is something else. You know, whether whether the woman is uh, is um, is is kind of a different kind of a female, kind of an evolutionary kind of a female, not so much you know, mother of the earth kind of a female, but just kind of going into the heights of ecstasy, just, uh, you know, raising raising the awareness and evolving the definition of female. I think that one thing that, that uh, Doña Celestina's work really does, and she's the, uh, the female mentor right. in the book mm-hmm. uh, Don Juan and the Art of Sexual Energy, she is very much involved in kind of cutting a new archetype for sexuality, uh, both male and female, but very much for the female energy, a new archetype of love. Our relationships don't work. Come on. And not everybody has to be a parent. Human beings are never going to evolve. It's the only thing that we do with our sexual energy is reproduce because it's our sexual energy that's also intrinsically involved in our enlightenment and in our evolution and in our longevity. And so Bernie Celestina's work is very, very much about the empowerment of these new archetypes for the male and the female, breaking away, not destroying the traditional roles, not not to, not harming them in any way, but saying, you know, not everybody has to do that. Absolutely. Not every- when I was reading about her... She- she felt different to me because, oh, oh. because I, I am a, I am a mother and I know the energies that it takes to to yes. be in the reproductive. Yes. Uh, Any mother listening also energy, yeah. energy, absolutely energy of being a mother because it does take the best for, of of you uh, and. Again, yes. I liked how you yes, said of what you allow, yes. <laughs> what yes. you allow, and a portion of that. But you know that that um, that archetype, that new archetype that you were definitely that that you were describing is definitely a different feel from that Mother Earth. Yes, mm-hmm. it's very evolutionary. Mm-hmm. It's very cosmic. It's a kind of a cosmic female, and it's not a cosmic mother. It's very much getting away. Doña Celestina very much gets away from woman as mother. What she's about is the sacred couple. Mm. She's about the empowerment of autonomous adults who don't have to be mommy and daddy, right. who are into it as an expression of masculine and feminine and feminine in one. There's mm. a beautiful word in 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 Nahuatl, the, in, in uh, Nahuatl, the the language of the of the Nahuatl or the or the or the ancient Toltec. Mm-hmm. It's Ometeotl. And it is it is the Oh, it, it is sounds the, so sexual too. Oh, it's beautiful. It is the, it is Say it the again. divine. It is the divine. It's it's the divine hermaphrodite or the sacred couple that is actually one joined at the root, oh, masculine yeah. and feminine in one, fully empowered, fully autonomous, fully honoring one another, not playing daddy and daughter, not playing mommy and son. Mm. Marilyn, I'm going to yes. interrupt you in a minute here because uh, for a second again because I've just now have received three more email questions. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're, if you People don't mind, go go go. If you yeah. don't mind, I'd like to keep you on for go just for a little it. longer to make up for the lost time. Please, please. You, you help yourself. Okay. <laughs> oh, help yourself. Love that. <laughs> Love it. Okay, first question is from uh, Trance4. Uh, how does someone go about learning the energy body anatomy and learn how to use this knowledge to heal others as a result? There are... Um well, first of all, one can explore energetic anatomy in dreaming. Mm-hmm. One can explore energetic anatomy doing energy work with the energy body. One can explore energetic anatomy via a relationship with good energy healers. Now, if they want to do this in their dream state, is it a good idea for them to, say, go into it with some kind of intent? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. When you go to sleep yes, at night, go into yes. the intent? Yes, if you're working with this, you can, for example, and here's a practice I, I will give the listeners, and this is a wonderful practice. If you want to, example, see the liver or the heart or the bones mm. or, or any or the blood or, or, or anything, anything within the body, mm. you, you set the intent to dream that, but you don't dream it from the outside. You set the intent to dream it from the inside, and what you dream is that there is an eye in there, an eye that you can open. Oh, and so you so open the eye within the heart. Of course, of yes. course, yes. So you open the eye within the bone or within the liver and you dream in there and you let the information 
come to that eye. And the eye also sometimes will kind of have an ear. It's kind of a sound and a vision thing. Right. But you let, you let the information, you let the energy convey information mm. through movement, through coming to the eye, through passing by the eye, yes. through revealing itself to the eye mm. or to the ear of the organ. And in that way, you can learn, oh my gosh, such, such, you can access such sublime medicine. Mm. Medicine of touch without touch. Medicine of, you can see deep-seated issues well, within, within a beloved, within a client, within, it, within a patient. Yeah, it seems to me then you're really, I mean, this, ultimately this is really using your light body to, to, to heal your physical body and gain the knowledge behind yes. it. Yes, and so it's very, it's very, yes. And, and then, of course, you bridge. Now, here's where the bridging comes in. Mm -hmm. Then you bridge what you have received in dreaming. You ask for a way, you know, while you're in there, mm -hmm. to bring this into your energetic work. That's right. And then what you do is you do exactly what your dreaming shows you. If your dreaming gives you a song, if your dreaming gives you a movement of, of energy healing, if your dreaming gives you a ceremony that you're to perform, or an herb that so you're do to whatever's, perform. So do whatever's presented exactly to you in your dream. Exactly, whatever whatever's presented is presented. To you. Okay. That's how you bridge it in. Let's move on, Marilyn. Yes. Uh, and I hope that this answers your question. Uh, uh, that was from MT. So transform. These are wonderful questions. Yeah. Now this is from uh, Jay Flores. Don't okay. know where you're calling from. It looks could be like M Mesa, New Mexico. I think. Okay. Uh, Mesa. 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 Okay. Uh, I think it is. Anyways, uh, the question is, um, I would love to know from Marilyn. In her book, she refers to the final crossing over from Ooh. this realm to a rainbow light world or realm. Yes. This realm was shown to her by Don Juan as the place where he could be would be waiting for her mm -hmm. when she is to leave this reality. Mm -hmm. Can she explain if? The, and I have another question after this one. So, okay. Uh, and can she explain if the final realm is one of the is one of oneness? Where all the unified, or if it is a realm where self identity still exists. Sincerely, Jeremy. Beautiful. I can say that there is no such thing as final. First of all, uh, the 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 final the, the word final was used with a little s, meaning when the when uh, one understanding of the body is 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 dropped off. Uh, definitively, mm. one w when the 99.5 frequency or the limitate subscribing to the limitations of 99.5 is dropped off for a more all-encompassing frequency, and all of the transmutations and the transformations that that implies. Right. Now, regarding the, regarding the oneness, I can say that in physics and in shamanism, in in the Toltiquity, mm -hmm. we have found. That there's a, that there's an agreement regarding what physics calls the singularity, and that when all the energy is one, all laws break down mm -hmm. because all laws have evolved after oneness. They are the they are everything that is in operation once oneness has become more than one. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to the 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 singularity, it is an ex experience and I'm very and it, it's not something that is definable by our languages by our laws by anything that we use to express beyond the oneness and I am so glad that this reader or, or this, this caller this emailer has focused there because that is the only place to go if you don't want to get lost if you focus on all the infinite diversity and never go for the oneness, you will never understand it because it is from the oneness that everything has come. The oneness can, the, the new laws can evolve. You go back to the singularity and a whole new assemblage of the universe can be configured from that singularity where all laws break down. If you want to understand how things are done, if you want to experience center, the place where you cannot be lost, the place where you can find your way home, where you can understand the original intent of creation and the evolutionary intent of what's coming after this experiment, then go to the singularity. Don't get lost in details. 
And that, and that is where we find most of our pain is when we get lost in the details. Yes. And we, Never we looking have ventured out so far away from where we, where because we originated. Because they're so intriguing. The mm. delusion, the illusion is so <laughs> infinite, so myriad, so fascinating. It's hypnotizing. But, but you can, you can, you can exhaust yourself in it. And if you don't know where center is, if you don't understand where center is, you'll get to the point where you have completely forgotten what it feels like, where you mm-hmm. may not even remember that it exists, where your state, where your perpetual state is one of, is, is one of being lost and is that of seeking. And many, many beings, the reason that they have the questions and the suffering that they have is because they haven't, they haven't looked, they haven't gone back to the singularity. They're afraid perhaps to give up what they have on the way because of course everything breaks down when you get there but they forget that they will be a part of that unified oneness and that that what they will experience there infinitely out, outweighs what they have to give up, give up to get there and that and that is something that is so important to stress it's, it's a remembrance yes. it's not something that that we were ever separated from this is a remembrance exactly. of what it's we go illusion. back to and we are and a lot of us have been caught up in illusion and and saying oh well we don't want to lose what we have well we never really had it in the first place we don't even necessarily have to go back to it we can go toward towards it, it. It's, it's, because, like that. it's because mm-hmm. it's all there's really no such thing as forward or back. That is just another illusion. Time moves in myriad ways. And when you step outside of time, there is no such thing as forward and back. You're just in the now. That's right. Absolutely. Well, let's go get on to our, our next email. Another exciting email. Okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, from a fellow dreamer. Okay. It says, how can we learn to dream together and learn universal knowledge? Ooh. Well, dreaming together takes intent, and it takes a, an intimacy, and um, and that that's a that's a really beautiful process. It's, it's it's kind of it evolves it evolves between dreamers, and um, it's it's kind of it's kind of sacred. It's almost like it's almost like you really wouldn't discuss certain aspects of that because they would be unique, or they would be they would be uh, precious, or intimate, or sacred unto those that are dreaming together in the same way that their most uh, sacred uh, moments of lovemaking would be uh, would be intimate and, and ecstatic and sacred unto mm-hmm. them. So there's a privacy about dreaming together. It's very much about the dreamers agreeing. It's kind of like a conjunction, a, a, a celestial conjunction or a synchronicity in that it is impossible really for for, for, for two energetic entities to occupy the same space in time, but they can do it, of course, if they are one. So there's, there's one dynamic there. If they remain two, they can get as close to each other as they possibly can in every way. And of course, this, this requires the sublime intent to do so, and a tremendous amount of, in, of agreement, and a great amount of love and appreciation and respect and honor and trust. And so it's like two planets conjoining, like a cosmic conjunction. They get together, they get so close together that they exchange energy via their proximity as open doorways. And then, of course, they may be able to proceed farther into into a, into a, into a marriage or a you kind know, of a unification, and that is based upon their volition and their intent. I think that that is gr- a, a great a way to describe that because you know Cam and I have have shared our dreams before, and and it's it's an amazing thing if you don't go into it with intent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and if you, it's a spontaneous, if it's a spontaneous conjunction. conjunction. It's it's quite an interesting oh. outcome versus it's something blind. that you actually go into with intent, yeah. and you and, and I. When you have when you have a partner or somebody that you're working with that you're close with that you want to experience this with, yes. absolutely the intent is what is is the necessary. Mm-hmm. Additionally, once it's occurred, you can maintain open the channels that have been activated mm-hmm. via the experience, and those channels then will will grow or blossom like the branches of a plant developing new fruits and additional channels. But you don't just kind of say, you know, well, we did it, it's over, yeah. you know, and you just drop it. But Good rather point. you let yeah. it evolve organically. Marilyn, you or know what? inorganically. Marilyn, <laughs> Very good. I hate to say this to you, but we're out of time. Oh, my God. I know. We've I know. Been well, on for, uh, gone on for four well, hours. We, <laughs> we brought you on. We this, is, this, is a, this, is a na- this is a nature of reality and time.